And then Tim Jones, Speaker of the House, how is this going to roll then? Jamie, I believe from the, the, the constant polling and counting of members that we've done, plus the assistance that we believe we're going to obtain from the other side of the aisle, there's going to be, a, I believe, a, a number of Democrats that will vote for this bill. We have enough votes to move this bill out of the House over to the Senate. And then it will be up to the Senate as to whether or not they want to take the bill up and vote on it as well. If they do and they have the number of votes to pass it as well, then the bill becomes law. Will that happen today, or is that going to happen over a period of a couple of days? Or? That, that could all happen today. I see. And, Jamie, the, the really exciting thing about today for both myself and Senator Tom Dempsey, who's the Senate leader, is that whatever bills that we override in both chambers today, Tom and I actually sign those bills into law for the people of the state. Today? Today. If it, if it goes through. Absolutely. That's cool. And, and, and Jamie, I want to uh, – Doug has hit the, real, the nail on the head as to what this bill is and what this bill isn't. The media, the, the left-wing media, has tried to, to turn this bill into something it is not. At its core, Jamie, this bill is about states' rights. The states created the federal government, right. not the other way around. And the only thing the federal government needs to do as far as, as, uh, as gun ownership and firearm rights in this country is look at the Second Amendment. Every other law is left to the states in this arena. Jamie, do you remember the Brady Act? Remember the Brady oh, Act yeah. back in the 90s? Remember that big battle? Uh -huh. Well, the left has completely forgotten about that. The Brady Act was largely determined unconstitutional as an unfunded mandate on the states. Three very brave sheriffs went or, uh, filed suit against the federal government, and they won because they said their state should not be forced to do what the federal government wanted them to do. Jamie, I wrote my Law Journal article on that 15 years ago, and life has now become, has come full circle. It's Unbelievable. amazing. Well, it's good stuff, man. And uh, hang out here, Speaker Jones. Moment in the morning. Uh, Doug Funderburg, best of luck to you, buddy. Appreciate you uh, coming in. Thanks for showing us your um, bottle of vodka. Bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. It's good right, talking right. to you. Good talking to you, too. Good luck today. Common Sense Radio. Sense Radio. Yes, people, it is, everybody, and welcome to uh, beautiful Jefferson City. We're actually, we're going to have a rollicking day here as the veto override you bunch of drunks. session begins. We've got a couple of huge issues that we're dealing with. You just heard from Representative Funderburg about the uh, gun issue, but then there's the other big issue, which is the veto of the bill that would reduce your taxes as an individual, reduce your taxes as a company. As I explained earlier, the government in Missouri has grown so large that it must be fed through a system of thievery known as high taxation. And all the open beaks out there, all the people want to know uh, exactly what it is that the legislature is going to do to take from them. That's actually the spin of the media. But the reality is tax cuts are not taking. Tax cuts are giving. Let's get that straight. Well, I don't need to explain that to House Speaker Tim Jones. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, Jamie. I'm doing great. It's a little different here in the, in the uh, fall, isn't it? It definitely is, man. It's nice, for crying out loud. The, fount the fountains are on outside. The oh, flowers yeah. have bloomed. Uh, <laughs> it's not January in Jeff City. No doubt. Also, by the way, we'll, we'll cover the uh, speech last night, President Obama's speech, in which he uh, essentially uh, said uh, that nothing. he's going to so, yeah, do something that, that, that actually, in the end, He's really not going to do, and never it's never going to happen. It looks like it's very unlikely that we're going to actually get any kind of military action, which is actually a good thing. Also going to hear from Newt Gingrich and Rand Paul, who just knocked it out of the park yesterday in response to uh, the Rodeo Clowns uh, missive on TV yesterday, all of about 16 minutes of it. So he's basically uh, asking for support, American support of an action he doesn't have any intention of taking. Which Jamie, is uh, interesting. Our, our, our stead around the country, our around the nation, continues to fall under this president who said everything will be just, it'll be all puppy dogs and, and ice cream once I go around the world and apologize. Yeah. Uh, well, so much for that, huh? So much for that. Hey, when you come back, I want to talk to you about whether or not you have the votes to override this veto of the bill. 
because a lot of the financial futures of Missourians depend on what's happening today at the Missouri Capitol with Speaker Jim Jones. Tim Jones is Allman here live. Allman in the morning, Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. Right here in beautiful Jefferson City, here for the veto override session. You just heard earlier from Doug Funderburg, who is the lead sponsor of the state's rights bill as it relates to guns and the freak out in the news media. And I'm talking about fabrications about exactly what the bill means have really been set in the media reporting on this and indeed even in the letters from the attorney general but keep in mind folks the jig is up for those who are addicted to oversized federal power and you saw it in colorado last night with coloradans you know what i you know tim jones yes i went to the colorado i went to the democratic national convention in denver i remember that and it was a fun time there because it was just kind of, you know, great to see the spectacle of it all. And you would go through Colorado, specifically like Denver, those kind of areas, and you would think that this is, wow, look at this big lib town and a bunch of hippies all around everywhere, you know, and uh, breathing in the nice Colorado air. And until you realize that, you know what, there are some really smart people in Colorado, hippie or not. They love their pot. They love their guns. They love liberty. Let's put it that way. And it was seen last night in these recall elections of these gun nuts. And they really had it handed to them. And if this is any indication, uh, today's vote might be another victory for gun rights supporters, especially states' rights supporters when it relates to guns. And, Jamie, that's right. It, this is, this today is about questions of freedom. Do we want more economic freedom in our state? Do we believe the people can spend their money better and more wisely in investing back in the economy and their businesses? Or do we believe that government can make those decisions better? Centralized planners, are centralized planners better than the people making their own decisions on that? And it's about freedom to exercise your Second Amendment rights. Uh, Do we believe that the people who have an individual right to bear arms, which has recently been upheld by the Supreme Court in that D.C. versus Heller case, do we believe they have the ability, or does government have to monitor us all the time and say, oh, don't touch that, don't touch that tool, don't touch that thing over there. We need to have all the money. We need to have all the weapons because we can handle all that better. Coloradans say no to both of those things, and I hope Missourians support the concept of economic freedom as well as the freedom to keep and bear arms. Today's vote, which I actually had my eye more on, uh, was the uh, economic uh, package that was vetoed by the governor. And we've explained this over and over again, but you guys were releasing Missourians and companies from the shackles of taxes. You were reducing, what, the uh, corporate tax by 3%, was it? Yes. And the personal income tax, what, by 6 but by, yeah, uh, like a half a percentage point over 10 years. Okay. Very, a very, as one of, our, one of our fiscal hawks said last night to the caucus, folks, this bill is modest. This is not a radical bill. This is a slow first step towards returning some tax money back to the taxpayers. Right. And, and, and yet it was vetoed by the governor. Uh, and as we explained, this is the trick bag that is uh, oversized state government. When you have built a government around this desire and need to feed the beast, yes. that is the, the open mouths of certain people in this, in this state, uh, you have to continually keep taking from the prosperous. And, Jamie, our budget this year that we appropriated, $25 billion. When you ask the left, when, when would enough money be enough to do everything you all want to do, they cannot give you an answer. until they Because if they believe take more and more and more. Now, I thought that Jay Nixon touted himself as the one who was the fiscal responsible Democrat. Wasn't he, in all of his ads, everything else, touting how he was the guy? Well, that was was the ads, Jamie. That was the election campaign. Right, exactly. That was the election campaign. Yeah, right. And the election campaign from November, less less than a year ago, was I work with Republicans. I 
helped craft the AAA bond. I preserved the AAA bond rating in the state. I helped craft all these years of balanced budgets. I love keeping the tax burden low on Missourians. The new Jay Nixon, Jay Nixon Part 2, is wanting to expand Medicaid, expand the budget, spend more money, increase entitlements, uh, take away some of our rights uh, uh, under the Second Amendment, keep more money for himself. It's, it's Jay Nixon Part 2, Jamie. It's Jay Nixon who has to re-earn his liberal stripes because he lost them the previous four years because Democrats told me personally they would rather have Jay Nixon be in our party than theirs because he was a Republican the first time. So he's got to re-earn the left-wing liberal stripes if he wants to continue his public service. He's kind of has the Senator Claire McCaskill deal going on there where you know they'll talk like they're outside of the party somehow, but she's still flying around on the president's plane, and he's still kowtowing to the left-wing uh, liberals in Missouri. In, in, pri- in, in public, Jay Nixon is a Truman Democrat, fiscal conservative, uh, he, he proclaims his love for guns and hunting and the great outdoors. I think in private, Jamie, at the, uh, at the highfalutin left-wing uh, cocktail parties, he's telling people how, well, kind of like uh, Obama's statement to Putin, well, I can be more flexible now. Right, right. I, I think Jay Nixon is telling his liberal supporters, I can be more flexible now. Now, when it comes to the votes, uh, where are we? I mean, where are we on the votes? To, I know you and I talked about a week and a half ago, and we tried to tally – who was on your side and who wasn't? Where do you stand now? Jamie, on the, uh, on the Second Amendment bill, I believe that we have the votes to override that bill in the House. And it will be a bipartisan override. I, I, I know the media will ignore that, and they'll ignore what the bill really is about, which is states' rights. But it will be a bipartisan vote to preserve the rights of our state. Uh, and I think it will pass. The tax cut bill. I believe that the tax cut bill remains an uphill climb. We never had the magical 109 during session. That's the number you need. We had 100 Republicans and three Democrats. I have a bad feeling that most of those Democrats are going to go home to Jay Nixon, which puts us back to 100 Republicans, which means we need nine people to vote a different way now. And it has been an uphill climb. And, Jamie, the number has fluctuated. Some days I hear we've gained a few people. Some days I hear we've lost a few. But, Jamie, I view this as a as a progression towards prosperity. This is the first time we've had a bill like this right. in 100 years. We got it out of the House. We, got it, we passed the law with over 100 people. If the bill does not pass today, Jamie, this will be issue number one next session. Missourians will get a tax cut. We will take care of all the problems Jay Nixon has talked about and pass another bill cleaner, uh, more focused. But I have no problem with this bill right now. But let me, I will take into consideration all the complaints and pass another bill next session. I why mean, Why would a Republican not support this effort? Jamie, you would have to ask those handful of individual legislators. Well, name one of them. Who is it? Who's, who's one? Okay, Jamie, so uh, Representative Nate Walker has been very clear from northeast Missouri for months that he will not support this bill. He has said it multiple times in the press. I, I'm not throwing him under the bus. That's just what he said. Right. He believes, uh, and the, here's the common thread, Jamie. The common thread is the education establishment in the individual Republican districts has convinced these people that this bill will destroy public education funding. Well, somebody was at a meeting, in fact, I think it was even as early as last night, they were at a school district meeting, and the superintendent, who makes a quarter of a million dollars a year, by the way, was uh, complaining and whining about how this was going to result in educational cuts. It doesn't have to. And, Jamie, it hasn't. It hasn't. You know who the only elected official is who's harmed education dollars in our state is? Jay Nixon. The last five years, if you look at his budgets, he has withheld money from K-12 through education. He has absolutely outright cut money from higher education. So here's what he does, Jamie. At the beginning of this fiscal year, he withheld over $400 million that we appropriated. We gave the most, the, the largest increase ever to education in our state. They have the most money ever in the state's budget. Jay Nixon withheld over $400 million. He is holding children hostage. And there is your carrot right. and stick 
There is your hostage taker. It is Jay Nixon. The person who is harming education dollars in this state is Jay Nixon and Jay Nixon alone. This is the same example that we used when they were touting how evil sequester was going to be. Yes. And we always maintained that, you know what, we're going to cut this. It'll be, this will be cut, too. And the, and the answer was, well, it doesn't have to be cut. Like, for instance, when I have, if I have a financial demand on my family, the first thing I do is not refuse to feed my children. It's, really it's I stop going out to dinner. And, 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 and that's exactly what the state can do now when handed this bill and say, listen, let's go back to the drawing board. We can figure out places to cut, and we don't have to punish school children. He is holding, the governor is holding $400 million from uh, hostage from our school children. He's using children, the elderly, and the mentally disabled as pawns in his, pol in his political game. Jamie, you know, we want to return some money back to the taxpayers so we can grow Missouri, a state that's been stuck at 48th in GDP for 10 years, a state that has had Jay Nixon at its helm for five years, and it has resulted in him being 35th out of 45 governors that were raided for economic development. He has no economic development plan. Jamie, he, where's his plan for job creation? What, what has he done? He's flown around the state, $5.6 million taxpayer-funded airplane, and worked against a bill that would grow Missouri. Jamie... Look at the other states that are succeeding. Governor Perry in Texas, Governor Fallon in Oklahoma, Governor Jindal in Louisiana. Uh, little old Bobby Jindal. Little old Bobby Jindal down in Louisiana. Little old Bobby Jindal. Jamie, you know what they're all doing? They're yeah. all cutting taxes. They're all moving to a right-to-work state or re maintaining their right-to-work status. They're reducing regulations. Guess what their state budgets are doing? They're exploding. They have more money for education. If we cut taxes and reinvest in Missourians, not in Missouri government, not in Missouri government. Reinvest in Missourians. We will grow Missouri and have more money for Missouri school children. This going to be a done deal as of the end of the day today, or what's going to happen? I believe it will be. I believe all the House bills will have been voted on by the end of the day. The question will be, can the Senate get their business done today as well? And I say that only as a, a fact, not criticism, because they get to filibuster during the veto session. Too. Right. Yes. So if they don't filibuster today... And they do up or down votes, so they can all get back to their districts and serve their constituents. Then we will be out of here today. Wow. And we will know the fate of all 29 bills. And, Jamie, we didn't talk about that at all. This is an historic veto session in the sense that Governor Nixon could become the most overridden governor in state history. One term, Bob Holden, has the record right now. <laughs> Common Sense Radio. Yes, indeed, folks. Live here in Jefferson City. And welcome to the program. Just heard from Doug Funderburk on the gun issue and Tim Jones on the tax issue. And it looks like these guys have it under control here, although that veto override of the tax bill, as Tim Jones pointed out, was a little cut off there uh, early on that uh, the, the voting on this one is iffy at best.